right, folks. Paradise Island, the island of your dreams. Master, where given our desert island location, we often have to catch our own dinner. Helena and Leanne bring the bait, I bring my rod, but the girls are far from impressed with my puny tiddler. You, meanwhile, can digest what's on tonight's show. Phil Campbell and Christian Daly dribble uncontrollably in Worldwide Soccer 98. But we begin with an event we call, Oi Bloke, Get Off My Half Pipe. <laughs> Speaking as a large, floating head, I've never found skateboarding much to my taste, but even I could appreciate the grungy thrills of the arcade title, Top Skater. Stripping a ball a real skateboard interface, players can execute a huge variety of tricks and moves that make real skateboarding seem tame in comparison. Points are awarded for each trick, which are graded A, B, C, and so on. In addition, Combos can be constructed by performing a number of tricks in quick succession. Each of my three contestants has one minute to earn as many trick points as possible. Right then, let's hit the half pipe. So please welcome our three talented yet abysmally dressed contestants, Riyadh Don H. Naito and Akai Inui. <laughs> Welcome, Hi. Hi, Aggie. Hi. Okay, Raya, the first of all, you've got one of those piercings there. Mm -hmm. Is it a problem when you go through airports or that? Does that set off metal I'm detection? I'm actually sure. I've never tried yet, to uh -huh. be honest. Probably, they, they probably don't let you leave the country now, do they? Probably not. Uh, let's move on to you, H. Right. Talk us through your outfit. Where, where did you pick up this fantastic gear from? <laughs> Secret. <laughs> Was it expensive? Did it cost you a lot of money? No, no, no. no, no expensive. A couple of quid? Yeah. Couple of quid. Mm. And finally, Aki. Yeah. Now, this is a waterproof jacket thing. Yeah. Why did you wear this particular outfit? Yeah, I like swimming. Yeah. Yeah. I, you I like, you like swimming? Yeah. That's good. You've come to the right place. Yeah, yeah. No. Haven't you? Okay, guys, uh, would you like to go and take your places by the machine? And I'll take a little trip up to the college box. We're about to quite literally have a laugh with Top Skater. Now, usually on Games Master, we pride ourselves on the unprofessionalism of our co-commentators. We're going to break with tradition for this event and have professional skateboarder from the Unibomber team, Mr. Frank Stevens, help me out. Welcome to the show, Frank. Uh -huh. Now, uh, tell us, what kind of uh, actual stunts and stuff do you pull off regularly? Um, well, I kind of skate street stuff, um, like stairs and rails and stuff like that, just the street obstacles that yeah. around the cities and things uh, like that. That's what generally I'm causing a nuisance to people who are out. Causing an absolute nuisance, scaring grannies and that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for commentating through this challenge. More on the kind of realism aspects of the game and how feasible some of these things are in real life. Each of our challenges has got one minute to amass the most amounts of points that they can. They get the points depending on the uh, fantasticness of the stunts and tricks that they manage to pull off. Riyadh, or uh, Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, is going to go first. Best of luck, sir. Start your challenge. Boys and girls, okay, Riyadh is playing as the character Keith. He's a basic normal skateboarder. In the top left-hand corner, you will see the total time this amassed. He gets 60 seconds. The points will be in the top right-hand corner. Anything else that appears, I will explain as we go along. We go to the first trick here. It's a super inward heel flip. 8,802 points. Can you do that in real life? You right? can. You can do inward heel flips. That's what that was good. That was a nice little sexy one there. Nope. You can see it says A on the left, on the right-hand side there. That is depends on how well the he's positioned when he does the stunt. S is the top one. S means special. We just got one there. There's an S there. That's why it was tons of points for that. He's up to 41,048 points. He's been going for 30 
few seconds. This is a great performance. It's all looks incredibly flashy here, Frank. Yeah, it's all going really well. It's working good. Okay, now the other trick here is you've got to go as fast as you can. He's fallen off now. That means his speed is going to drop. The stunts now will not be able to be as good. And he's only got oh. about seven seconds now, but he's managed to do that one. <laughs> Some people who go big, but this is a uh, this is version on a bit. You would need a, a rocket up your jacket yeah. to get that high. Really. That was an awesome one. A 360 leg shove it. He's beating Ryan's score of this is an incredible score. He's got six seconds left. We've broken the hundred thousand point limit. It's actually going to be going to be able to pull up a stop before he runs out of time. I don't think he will. No, I have time now. One hundred and two thousand six hundred and five points for H. H. Make way for Aki. Okay, Aki is playing as Peanut, who's a uh, bodyboarder again. Totally unrealistic because you get a lot of chafing if you try this on a pavement in real life. 102,605 points to beat. Building the speed up at the start. And the first trick, aerial 1,080. Now, I would imagine that would be quite tricky to pull off in real life, right? Um, definitely would be on concrete. You come out with a lot of bruises and a lot of scrapes. I think that, especially in the bikini, like that. You'd... Now, the, the thing is, is, those three stunts were all quite similar, but they did a mass together to build combos. Yeah. If you do a, a stunt within one and a half seconds of the previous one, you will get extra points. This is a cool combo. It's the third combo there that he's managed to pull off. Fourth one there, fifth one there. This is huge points. 160,500, Because of stringing the combos together, Aggie has won it already. The rest of this is just going to be a, what would you call it, an exhibition? It's a, yeah, just showing off, really. It's a total show off showing off his now. Style. Do you think there'll ever be a time, Frank, when you'll be able to pull off stuff like this in skateboarding? I really don't know. We can live and wait for that. And yeah. the time is running out. That's it. 60 seconds. start with you. Uh, I, I'm not a bad start, but it all went wrong towards the end there. Yeah, I missed a few of the, a few of the barrels and um, I also fell, which slowed me down quite a bit. I um, mm. didn't get enough speed and I didn't get to the end, to the ramp at the end. Now, uh, H, you, uh, not, but again, not a bad score o over the 100,000. Were you happy with your game? Yeah, more than eight and three pin. Very happy. It's a prayer to get this game. Yeah. yeah. And Aggie, yeah. you totally decimated the competition there. What was your secret? Was it the combos? Yeah, I think yeah, cool combo is the most important thing. And I know that you spent a little bit of money practicing the game yeah. uh, this week before you came on. How much money did you spend? At least four, 400 pounds. 400 pounds? Money well spent. Because Aggie is the winner of the special top skater, Games Master Golden Joystick! <laughs> Do you know why the news is called news? Well, it stands for North, East, West, South. Our news stands for what's happening in video games. Currently performing death moves on the opposition in the States is Mortal Kombat Annihilation, the second big screen outing for your favourite digital psychopaths. Virtually every character seems to have secured an appearance, including various blokes who used to go out with your mum. Mortal Kombat Annihilation promises to be good, clean fun when it opens here next year. Alien Resurrection is out now on film, I've seen it and it is awesome, but you're looking at exclusive shots from Alien Resurrection the game, developed by Fox Interactive who made the surprisingly good movie license Die Hard, when it's out next spring, Alien Resurrection should again prove to be an exception to the great film stroke cat game scenarios of the past. 
Also due next year is Quake 64, the N64 conversion of the PC Classic. As well as all the stuff from the original, Quake 64 is rumoured to have additional levels as well as that multiplayer shenanigans. With Doom, Duke Nukem and soon Quake all available for console, it looks like PC owners will have to find something else to be smug about. You know, viewers, there's something missing in my life. It can't be money, it can't be women, it can't be Toby Jogs in the shape of famous World War II generals. I've got tons of them. It can only be today's celebrity challenge. There are many football games I could have chosen for my celebrity contestants, but none that captured the spirit of this greatest of games more than Worldwide Soccer 98 on the Sega Saturn. Ancient rivals England and Scotland will meet again on the virtual pitch in a match of two 90-second halves. Right then, let's prepare for kickoff. Right, now we're going to use this challenge as a curtain raiser for domestic hopes in uh, the France World Cup. So, Welsh and Irish viewers, you can go and make a cup of tea because representing Scotland and England, please welcome Christian Daly and Saul Campbell. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Saul. Hi, how are you doing? Welcome, Christian. Hi there. All right. Done, right? Okay, guys, now, um, obviously, both of you are looking forward to France and the World Cup. Uh, what's, what's the best and worst things that you think there'll be about France, Saul? Uh, I think the best thing will be me playing, in, you know, actually playing in the uh, World mm -hmm. Cup. And uh, I think the worst thing could happen is uh, losing in the final. Yeah. No, that won't be that, won't be that bad. <laughs> that won't be that bad at all. Uh, Christian, what about you? What are you looking forward to about France? Um, same as Sorry, really, just being there. Uh, it's a massive thrill just to be involved in something like the World yeah. Cup. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can, we can play England and hopefully we can beat them this time. Oh, it will happen. I am, I am absolutely convinced. <laughs> well, uh, luckily, as an impartial presenter of this show, I have no bias <laughs> in the result of this titanic struggle between Scotland, yes, and England pants. <laughs> we will find out the result and much more after this break. <laughs> Well said for a clash of domestic titans, England against Scotland in the shape of Saul Cardinal against Christian Daly. At this point, I'd now like to welcome back one of our friends from last year's. He's been dabbling with motor cars, but now he's back <laughs> where he belongs, beside me in the comedy box, Mr. Jim Rosenthal. Welcome back, Jim. Welcome back, indeed. Back on a desert island where I belong, then. Well, Jim, you know what I thought was strange was that one minute, there you were on Games Master doing the commentary. The next thing, you signed up for a massive deal doing the Formula One. Do you think they saw you on Games Master? It was all on the back of my appearance with you. <laughs> that was it? I that... thought, if I could handle you, I could handle anything. <laughs> Not a Schumacher, it was a doddle. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, okay, this is Scotland, England. Is it going to be like the typical clashes? Scotland coming out, lots of skill, Brazilian flair, and England fluking it? It's not quite how I've seen the last <laughs> clashes, I must admit. I'm, I'm racking my memory for England fluking it. Uh, I think it's going to be very, very competitive. I think it's going to be tight. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to play two one and a half minute halves here. We are not surprisingly, Christian is going to play as Scotland, Saul is going to play as England. The best of luck, guys. Let's go to kick off. Okay, Christian Daly in the dark blue shirt of Scotland playing down. And uh, Saul Campbell in the white of England playing up the pitch. And it's England on the attack, Jim. No, it's the kiss of death for me. It's a shot of Scotland. It just goes wide there. I thought I that, that was happen. well wide, that one, actually. <laughs> I think you're getting a bit carried away a bit early on here. Let's have a bit of, sort of reality in this game. <laughs> England looking very composed at the moment and, and uh, Sol Campbell looking for a run from his front men as uh, Scotland hack it desperately forward. You see him looking for a run from his front men, I say hoofing it up. And it's Scotland on the attack, it's the uh, Brazilian in Briggs. Oh, and this has got to be a penalty, even though it's in the box. Danger, it's danger. a drive on, it's a shot, oh, it just misses. Jim, now that is missed by millimetres. Uh, I'll forgive you getting a bit excited about that one. I must admit the old hairs went up on the back of my head there, but uh, Sol Campbell seemed to back off there with the England team. Interesting tactic. And that's another interesting <laughs> tactic there that has uh, given Scotland a corner. Here they go, the big men are up in the box. It's a cunningly flated one. Right to the back of the box. It's in, yes! He nips in there. Kevin Gallagher has got Brick scores. 1-0 in Scotland. Well, you've got to 
scorer wrong, but it was a fairly straightforward goal, and the England defenders will not be chuffed about that, and they won't be very happy about the way they gave away this corner either. England kicking off playing up the pitch with a lot of work to do. Yeah, they're looking to get back into this straight away, but there's some fierce challenging going on in the midfield. Oh, that looks like Gazza there, that guy, doesn't he? He's got the yeah, right hand. Yeah, yeah, he did. Here comes Scotland again. It's a good long ball in, but it's safe with the keeper. Be looking to get a, just a little bit of momentum going and perhaps make a, a single pass be nice to see. <laughs> but good individual skills though. Oh, it is. It's a long shot. Oh, it's a beautiful save, but is it going to go across the line? No, it's over the bar. Splendid well, athletics from the Scottish keeper there, Jim. Well, amazing in this first couple of minutes here. We've seen a Scottish goal and a good Scottish save as well. I can't quite understand it. Oh, oh and another one. It bobbled a little bit. That was Gaza, wasn't it? Near post. It looked a bit small and slim. I'm just a bit worried about the way we back off when, when uh, Scotland attack. But uh, you could just be over elaborating here and giving England a chance to get back in it. Just one down. It's a terrific piece of skill. A great chance for an equaliser here from Gaza. Oh, it's great. Oh. He's, the keeper. Oh, he's very nonchalant, this goalkeeper. Who is he? <laughs> he's extremely casual. It's another <laughs> desperately long job from England. I think they're clutching at scores there, Jim, as we approach uh, half time. The keeper's had a great game and. Uh, but England, I'm glad to see we're attacking. It's an offensive error though, and England oh, might be through as the referee looks at his watch. He takes the chance to strike the save from the Scottish keeper there as a corner to England. He's kept you in it. We got an equalising chance just before half time. It's headed up there. It's got enough numbers ball. in there. The goalkeeper is right place again. Can you the believe it? His hands in soccer. Once oh, again, the referee looks at his watch, blows the whistle. It's half time. It's Scotland 1. England, isn't it? Now, Jim, what will you be hoping to see from England in the second half? I'd like to see a bit more passing. I'd like to see uh, the defence actually making challenges a bit higher up the pitch. And I'd like to see that Scottish goalkeeper off the pitch. <laughs> that would, yes, that would help England. I would just like to see generally a repeat of the first half. OK, let's go to the second half now. Scotland down the blue playing up the pitch with Christian Daly. So Campbell in England playing in the white, playing down the pitch. Well, Dominic, I think England be well pleased by the way they finished the first half. Um, Craig Brown checking the name of the Scotland goalkeeper because he's had a tremendous game so far. And from where I'm sitting, he's really kept Scotland in it. He's checking to make sure that he is actually Scottish. And here they come again to him attack. Oh, how did he miss that, Jim? The goalie committed himself. Wide open goal. Uh, this England defence, and they keep backing off. Sol Campbell's got to make those tackles higher up the pitch. It's the another open goal. Oh, dear, oh, dear. They don't leave it to go. Uh, I want to have another look at it. He's, he's scuffed that goal kick, hasn't he? Well, an England man caught in possession and a brilliant, brilliant finish from Christian Daly in Scotland. Major, major head shaking for Mr. Hoddle and a big, big inquest to follow this at the moment. But still a lot of time to go. We could get back in it. It's uh, it's almost early doors uh, in the second half. Still 2 0 in Scotland. They are fight back needed from England. But it's still danger. Up Scotland, Jim. Danger, danger. This could be the third. Oh, penalty! Oh, no, no, You've got two goals. That was a corner and a referee. He'd have been off there. And uh, it's Scotland now on the attack again. Christian using this technique in the middle. He's they're taking the Michael now. I'm, I'm interested in Sol's defenders. Why they run away from the ball each time? I can't quite work that tactic out. But no, that had explained to me after the game. Here we come now. It's a great through ball, but it's to no one in particular. In the way, oh, great tackle from Gaza. The other. He really is what he would do. So the box, Jim. Surely. I thought it was. I thought it was. Referee, come on, man. England needs something back very, very rapidly. Gaza goes diving in. We've got problems again. But can we get you on the counter-attack here? Here's Gaza. He's the only player, really, that stood out for me. He's going all the way. It's a lung-bursting effort, this one. Oh, that's a lovely little bit of a shot. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Gaza made it, and a brilliant finish. Well done, Sol. That has to be the probably the slickest move of the game so far, Jim. I thought so. Gaza kept it and kept it, and a terrific finish. 2-1, everything to play for. OK, the clock is ticking off England. Very, very little time to pull this level. Scotland kick off. They might decide to just play for possession. People know they're still attacking, but in a bizarre fashion. Well, I don't know. I think um, on balance, you've had the better of this half. That goal is, must lift England's spirits. But just a couple of minutes to He's go. And there's a third He's goal here, surely. Oh! Campbell, a man who defended so valiantly for England in Rome, 
seems to have left a few of his defensive qualities in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> no one picking up the runner at all. It's 3 1 to Scotland. Maybe Ellen can snatch a late consolation, but surely even a draw is beyond them now. Uh, you never know. You never know. It's not over till it's over. And in fact, that's it. It is over. <laughs> I know my opinions on how that match went, but I'll, uh, I'll leave it to the expert. Jim, how did you see it? Well, first of all, we are on Fantasy Island, aren't we? So it couldn't <laughs> happen in real life. But um, I don't think that we or Seoul or England, whichever way you want to put it, ever really recovered from that first goal mm. when the corner came out of nowhere and uh, Scotland took the advantage. But at least England did get the best goal of the game. Uh, yes, no, it was. It was a fantastic move for you, goal, wasn't it, actually, So Yeah, it was right in the corner, but, uh, you know, the defensive work wasn't too, uh, too good. You know, basic errors. Now, Christian, a fantastic performance there. Uh, can you see that happening if the two teams met in the World Cup? Um, I think it's a distinct possibility, um, especially <laughs> if we adopt the same uh, Brazilian style of football yeah. as we showed there, and, and what, that's, that's the way we can play. What was, what was the secret, then, to your success in that? Uh, it was definitely a, a good team performance and, uh, you know, it, it bodes well for France 98. I am uh, so to go to Gamesmaster Joyce just now. Hopefully the World Cup <laughs> in France in the summer goes to Christian Daly! <laughs> Those Spice Girls, eh, what are they like? They are everywhere! Are you sick of the sight of them? Good, because they have nothing to do with today's feature. <laughs> Following our report last week on the software on show at Nintendo Space World Expo in Tokyo, today we take a look at the hardware side of things, specifically the first public showing of the N64's Double D add-on. The Double D is a right level disk drive that opens the way to far bigger games than can be squeezed on a card. Several titles are in development. They should allow you to customize things like race tracks, characters, and detailed game settings. For now, though, Nintendo are pushing the DD for the kind of interactive activity normally associated with PCs. Titles like Talent Maker, Polygon Maker, and Picture Maker allow you to fool around with all sorts of sophisticated graphics tools. By capturing picture and sound through a specially modified card, you can indulge your artistic bent to the full. Make virtual characters with your own features mapped onto them and look really, really cool, like this guy. Yeah, whatever you say, mate. Uh, you can create advanced 3D models, draw badly, animate pointlessly, and generally fritter away your time in a manner which you'll bitterly regret on your deathbed. But the biggest seller for the new DD is likely to be the Pocket Monster series, which I love because I've got a big Pocket Monster myself. They're a kind of Tamagotchi for Game Boys in which you breed monsters and fight your mates via a link cable. It's sold 8 million copies in Japan to date, and Pocket Monster Stadium on the DD accesses the Game Boy Pocket Monsters via the N64 controller to unleash a whole new world of Pocket Monster hijinks. With rival monsters loaded in the DD, your favourite critters can then settle their scores in fully rendered 64-bit style. Pokemon Snap! Sister product, Pocket Monster Snap, is bonkers. It's a kind of Pocket Monster Safari thing in which you wander around a virtual landscape populated by monsters and uh, take pictures of them. Pokemon Snap! The Double D will be released in Japan in March, and don't be put off by the weird titles, they're mad over there. We think with its unparalleled potential for truly interactive gaming, the Double D could well be the beginning of something huge. We've now completed four Games Masters. Mathematicians out there will realise that means we've got six left. Six weeks until the light entertainment output of Britain becomes dodgier than buying a left-handed screwdriver from a used car salesman sitting in the back of a lorry. Good night.